Hello, I'm Carol Duncan and welcome to the Lost Newcastle podcast. With more than 70,000 members, Lost Newcastle has become the online meeting place for generations of Novocastrians, sharing photos, stories, finding lost friends and loved ones, and learning plenty of new things about this place we call home. Whether you're a local, an expat, or new to Newcastle, grab a cuppa and enjoy. Ross, tell me a little bit about Newcastle in 1899. Um, it, it, it all started from a uh, photograph in a book um, that was on New South Wales uh, railways and uh, in one of the pictures it showed um, a scene looking across the uh, railway yard and, and Newcastle station and across to some sailing ships and uh, it, it inspired me to actually have a go at making it which I thought would be uh, a quick and easy job and 10 years of my life has slipped by. So all of a sudden, 10 years later, you now have for this weekend only this beautiful diorama here at the uh, Newcastle Museum. That's right. And uh, I've I've got a crew who've come along uh, who uh, are good helpers and uh, reliable helpers. And uh, we've uh, had things running generally fairly well for the public. There's been the odd crash. Yes, sorry about that. (laughs) (laughs) I touched something I shouldn't have. I couldn't help it. It's so cute. It's it's very (laughs) tempting to touch and especially for the little kids with the control panel out the front. There's so many wonderful buttons and lights to push but uh, no, it's it's, it's gone quite well. So this is 10 years of work. What are all of the components actually made of and do you hand make them? Do you hand machine them? How do you actually build it? Yeah, well I've actually come up to Newcastle numerous times and, and measured all of the buildings that still exist and then uh, gone back uh, home to the workshop and, and recreated all the buildings out of styrene plastic and uh, then for the finer details I've actually drawn uh, using Corel Draw on the computer um, windows and the clock faces for Customs House um, and even the footbridges for uh, the, uh, the, the line um, that uh, were then photo etched in brass or nickel silver and uh, that, that the artwork gets sent off to a place in Scotland where they do um, uh, photo etching for printed circuit boards and things like that, it's that's that kind of thing. And then when, when it gets sent back, maybe three or four weeks later, you just cut them out and you've got all these perfectly detailed windows and doors and... Uh, and, and this also includes all the passenger oh, passenger carriages and, and a lot of the goods railway carriages, all the horse-drawn vehicles, uh, and the footbridges were photo etched as well. Yeah. I think it's a really incredible opportunity for New- Novocastrians to actually time travel to you know the place that we're at now to actually really see it physically before you, a hundred and what twenty four years ago. Yeah. How accurate is that? It, it, it's it's quite accurate. Um, uh, I, I had a surveyor's wheel and uh, and some plans, and uh, I drew some of the plans. I drew myself, and I would just run around all these places, uh, the, the buildings that existed, um, roadways, uh, and 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 uh, just got all these measurements. And I would just yell out, yell them out to my friends, and they would write them down on the on the plans, and and then. Uh, <laughs> We'd pack up and go home and have a go at uh, making some more models and then uh, quite often you drive all the way back to uh, Canberra or Bungendore where I am and then um, you find that there's still some me- measurements that you've missed and it meant another trip back up to Newcastle again. I know that you have done Central Station in Sydney and that's at the Thirlmere. Uh, it, it, is that right? I'm, ho- I'm hoping it'll go into the Thirlmere uh, Railway Museum uh, eventually but... Um, once again, it was one of those things where uh, I had plans and, and, but no measurements, so I, I went up with another friend and <laughs> with the surveyor's wheel and, and, measured, and central. measured Central Station. <laughs> it was funny because when I got out of the car and I just looked up at the building, I just said, I can't do this. But uh, I just bit at a time, a bit like Newcastle, just a bit at a time, and um, instead of looking at the overall picture, and, uh, and, and I was able to just plod my way through it. Ross... Why Newcastle? As I said, it's just from a picture in a book which looked nice and I just didn't realise how big a, a scene and, and how complex it would be. The, the details in here and, in fact, David from the museum, I'm going to 
ask you these sure. questions because the details in here, one of the first things that you said to me was, look, it's Ralph Snowball's horse and buggy. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, Ross's work is inspired by so many different kind of elements existing, you know, primary sources, secondary source, you know, sources, and... Um, Amongst those is the incredible collection of Ralph Snowball's, like, glass plate negatives that um, are such a defining and much-loved uh, collection that, that exists still in Newcastle today for Novocastrians to enjoy. You are also um, a rail enthusiast, so I guess both professionally and personally, you must find this diorama fascinating. I find it beautiful. I think it is a beautiful work of art. It is, um, you know, it is rare to see uh, something realised physically that is a combination of accurate research and walking in, in, in Newcastle itself, well, you know, doing surveying and, and measuring things <laughs> by the metre and then the artistry of the backgrounds and the just glorious colour palette of this layout as well. Like, it, it's it's... It's a thing of great beauty. It's a thing that actually operates and moves. It has a life and, and kind of movement to it. And it, it's been amazing to watch people be enthralled by it, sort of like from afar, you know, via Lost Newcastle and, and, and Ross's sharing of it online. And then in person to see it today, just people glued to this this incredible piece of work. You just, your job now is to stop kids like me, big ones and little, from touching things, right? It's very tempting. <laughs> it's very, very tempting to <laughs> smack from time to time, I'm sure. <laughs> so when you come in, don't touch it. Just look. Look with your eyes. Look with your eyes. You know, it's a feast for the eyes. What other little... You, you mentioned Ralph Snowball's mm. um, buggy. What other particularly... Um, Novocastrian iconic things. We've got Earp. We've, well, yeah, in the background is, uh, you know, Earp is still a, a Newcastle company today, but the ships in the harbour, like, are, 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 are all correct. They're all ships that have been to Newcastle or could have potentially visited Newcastle. OK, Ross, so how did you work out the ships? There was no way you could go and measure them. Yeah, well, unfortunately, um, uh, the SS Namo is uh, at the bottom of the ocean off Sydney Heads. But um, uh, there's, the, I mean, the, even the SS Namoy started just from one picture in a book and it had some basic dimensions and um, compliments of uh, the internet and, um, and, and even the Maritime Museum. I, I, I found probably about 12 photographs uh, with just incredible side and, and end um, views of it. And there was even three photographs of showing um, uh, passengers and crew on the deck of the Namoy. So it's incredible that to, you pick one ship's name and, and, and the amount of information that you can still find on something like that. So uh, I put the uh, all these boats, including J&A Brown's Tugboats Champion and Commodore, uh, I, I had enough photographs and the basic measurements to put them into Corel Draw and then um, scale them uh, and then draw my uh, re retrace them and draw my own plans. Ross, are there any Easter eggs in it? <laughs> Easter eggs. Oh, David. Oh, you, you know, like, like you know, a little special surprise, a little secret sort of like, you know. I, I reckon the, the snowball, like, one the, is... The is, wagon, yeah. Yeah, is one yeah because I, um, it, it's interesting. There's, I think there's about three different uh, sets of writing on his wagon, which, which has gone through time. Uh, it's been rewritten and, and um, uh, it's the sign writing. And um, so... I've, I've taken a guess that it was a different writing on each side of his wagon. So I've, I've drawn up, once again in Corel, and drawn up the decals with the exact writing and style of writing, the font, and then um, recreated it as a decal and, and then uh, added that to the, the wagon. And it's, it's quite sharp writing. If you get right up close, uh, it, it's, it's all detailed, the, the writing. I remember the first time you put a photo up in Lost Newcastle and the Losties were just beside themselves. Yeah. You've already had a lot of... It's only just opened this morning here at the museum. It's only here for the weekend. You've already had a lot of people coming in to have a look and take photos and hopefully not touch. What sort of feedback are you getting? <laughs> yeah, enormous. It's, it's great. Um, uh, to the point where I'm so busy talking with people and, and sharing their... Um, 
their memories uh, and then I'd look across at um, some of the other people who are helping and, and they're just flat out talking with people as well. So it's been really entertaining for us all and, and to be able to share all these um, the memories. And Have you learned anything? Has anyone given you an amazing story yet that you've gone, oh my God? I, th- I think what is, is really good is that through the, um, the lost Newcastle site, um, uh, a family got in touch with, with, with me who were not John Brown's but Alexander's Brown's um, uh, family and uh, there was I think five of them came in and they were all descendants and and it was it was fantastic to actually share the, the, the scene with them and, and, and show uh, part of their past their family past that's amazing is it that's one of the things. I love most about Lost Newcastle is the the reunions, I guess, if you could call it that. It, it, it pretty much is like that, yeah, and and it's drawn a lot of people in, um, and and they're all really willing and happy to share their stories uh, to us as well. I am so excited to see it here in Newcastle. Finally, thank you so much for bringing it. That's all right. I'm uh, I'm really glad to, that I'm finally got a location where I can actually show it to the people. No, I've had a lovely time and it's been such a pleasure to have Ross and his team, uh, if if they can be called a team, a a loose group of friends that that have just made this incredibly beautiful thing. You know, it's it's glorious to look at. It's glorious to experience. Um, You could give someone all the time in the world and all the money in the world and tell them to make you that and they couldn't. They couldn't do it for you. They just couldn't. (laughs) So we're very glad to have it here at Newcastle Museum for the weekend. Do you have a lost Newcastle story to tell? Get in touch. I'm Carol Duncan and you can be part of the story too at lostnewcastle.com.au or join us on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm.